In this video, we will create a beautiful blog for writers with very minimal features to allow for the writing to stand out and speak for itself. You will learn how to create a very basic website from scratch using the Seedprod Theme Builder's drag and drop features. This means you never have to write a single line of code, but have complete control over the look and feel of your website. Everyone here at Seedprod loves having you part of the community, so please subscribe, like the video, and hit the bell to be notified of future videos so you don't miss our tutorials and important announcements. All right, let's get started. So here I have my WordPress dashboard, and the first thing we wanna do is go ahead and install seed prod. I'm going to be using the pro version for this video to take advantage of all of the new features with the theme builder. So head over to seedprod.com or click the link in the description below. Once here, go ahead and click on get seed prod. And once you have an account, let's go ahead and click on login. On the left hand side, enter your email address, your password, and click on login. Once you're in your account, let's go ahead under the downloads tab and let's click on download landing page pro. And on the left hand side, let's go ahead and get the license key here. You can click the icon here to copy that to the clipboard and then you can close this tab for now. On the left hand side, let's go over to to plugins and add new and upload plugin. Next, let's take this zip file and you can drag this and drop it onto the choose file button or you can click on choose file and select the zip file from your hard drive. Let's go ahead and install now and activate the plugin. Seedprod will ask you for the license key. So let's paste that right here and verify key. If everything went well, you should see a green success message. We can close this tab at the bottom if you're using the same or similar browser as I am. Now, before we get started, there's a few things that I set up. The first thing you'll notice here in the top right corner is I set up a profile. We can click on edit profile. And all I did was add a first name, last name, the display name publicly as William Shakespeare. So this is just something that we can display on the blog post at the bottom of the post themselves, along with the bio info and the profile picture. So the profile picture, usually you have to use Gravatar. For this example, I used a plugin. And this one is called Simple Local Avatars, but there's many, many different types of avatar plugins or profile picture plugins that you can use. The next thing I did under posts, all posts, was I added three different test posts. And they just have a title, some text in the body, and then a featured image here. That's it. There's nothing else to them. I also, under pages, added three different pages and about order book and resources. These are just test pages that I'm not going to build out today as I just want to focus on the home page and the functionality of the blog post itself. But we'll use these in the menu. Okay, so let's get started by coming over seed prod and we want to use the new theme builder feature here. So let's click on theme builder. And here we have the global CSS. Let's go ahead and set our styles. And here we can see the seed prod page builder. But in this example, we're actually editing the styles, not actually building a page. So the content you see here on the right hand side is just test content that we use to set the different styles for our headers and forms and buttons and links and all of that stuff. So let's open up our colors here on the left-hand side. And I'm just going to set a few things here. So the headers, I want to keep probably black. This will be very minimal, so we don't want anything too shiny. So we'll take the text, maybe make it a gray color. It's easy on the eyes to read. Now the buttons, we probably won't have buttons on this website, but if we did, maybe we could just leave them blue how they are. Or if you want to keep that minimal style, you could have gray or even black if you like. Maybe I'll go with a dark gray as well. For the links, I'm going to have these actually go the opposite. Instead of standing out a lot, I think we have one right here. I'm going to actually make these gray and have them be a little bit faded out. So they actually stick out on their own because they're faded out. And we'll probably add an underline on that as well. So they stick out a little bit better. For the background color, I just want to use maybe a light gray. This is just really easy on the eyes. And that's it. Let's go ahead and open the font section here next. For the header font, I want to use a font called Meriwether. Let's go ahead with this one. And we can set the weight. And this is just how thick the actual font is. So if we select light, you can see it's lighter. If we go black 900, you can see it gets a little bit thicker. I'm just going to use the light 300 for this example, and I'll leave the colors the same here. Next for the body text topography, let's go under edit, and I'm going to select Laura. And the font weight here, let's go with maybe just the regular 400. I think that looks pretty good. Next for our links here, we have the normal state and the hover state. So right now this is in the normal state. If I hover over, that'll be the hover state here. So the normal state, I actually want to go under the topography and let's set an underline here. Now we can see that. And then for the hover state, let's make this stand out a little bit by turning it black when you hover over it. And there we go. That's it. You can actually continue on if you like for the background buttons, forms, layout, and custom CSS if you like. But I'm going to leave it just like this. And let's go ahead and save these styles and we can close this. The next thing I want to do is create a custom header. So let's go ahead and add a new theme template. If you like, you can click on themes here and import one of our pre-made themes to give yourself a head start. But since this blog that I'm creating is so minimal, it's pretty easy to create on your own. Let's go ahead and add new theme template. And I'm just going to call this header and the type will be a header. And I want to include this on the entire site. Let's go ahead and save this. Great, now we're gonna create our header. And like we already saw in the conditions, this is gonna be applied to every single page at the top. So the first thing I wanna do here is create a new row for a column and just a single row. And then click on here, go to back to the blocks. 
And under the standard blocks, let's take our headline and we'll drag this up and I'll click the block settings and I'll just change this to whatever the name of your blog website is. For the font size on the left hand side here, I'm just going to put this up. Let's do about 72. That's fine. And I'm going to come back to my blocks and search for the divider. And I'm going to drag this right underneath here. I'm going to click and let's change the color here to maybe a light gray. Let's go with C9, C9, C9. And instead of the solid line, let's go with the dotted. And for this top one, I just want it to be around the size of the logo, maybe a little bit smaller. So right around, I think 30 is fine. Let's go under advanced and spacing. And for now, I just want to take all the spacing off and we can fix that later if we need to. Underneath this, let's go ahead and we'll just use the text block under standard. So I'll put this right underneath my divider and we'll edit this. And I'll just say something simple for now, like welcome to my blog. I'm going to go ahead and center this. And great, on the left hand side here, I'm going to come down and go to layout navigation. And it's hard to select that divider now, so I would just want to duplicate this on the right hand side. We can see our whole page layout here. And I'm going to duplicate this and drag it below the text. I'll just highlight this. And on the left hand side here, I'm going to change this to about 70. So right about here, you can see the edges of it. Next, I'm going to come back and let's select menu. I'm going to select nav menu. I'm going to put that right under the divider here. So under the menu settings, we have simple and WordPress menu. Let's go ahead and save our page here and click on WordPress menu. And it says go to menu screen to manage your menus. Let's go ahead and click on this. We can see that we're now under appearance and menus. Let's create our first menu. I'll just call this maybe main menu. That's fine. And here we can organize what we want in our links. So we have the home page, we have an about page, order book resources, and you can just drag and drop to change the order of these. Once you're happy with everything, let's go ahead and create this menu. And there we go. We can close this. Again, let's make sure that we've saved this page and we can just refresh this. And now we can see that by default, it selected our main menu. But if you had multiple menus on the left hand side here, you can select it and you can pick which one you want. Next, I just want to center this and we have the space between. So I'm actually going to put a lot of space between these. Right. Next, I just want that divider again, but the longer one here and we'll just duplicate this. And I'll just drag this underneath our me main menu. And there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's go ahead and save this and we can close out. Let's go ahead and open our website and check it out on the front page. And you can see that it's not active because on the top right here, we have to enable Seedprod theme. You only want to do this on a brand new website or if you plan on overriding an old website. But be careful if you have an active website because this will overwrite your file. Let's go ahead and activate this. And it says this theme requires a static home and blog page to be set in WordPress. Would you like for us to automatically create these pages and update the WordPress settings? OK, and let's click on OK. Great. Now let's come back to our front page and we can reset and it says no template found. And that's because we didn't create a front page template yet. However, if we come under pages and all pages, you can see that it created a blog post page for us and a home page. In this video, we're not going to be using the post page, but you could if you like, because our front page is actually going to be the page that displays all the posts. Now, if you notice in the message under settings and reading, and here it says your home page displays. And this is where you can select which page is used for your front page and which page is used for your blog. Again, we're not going to be using the blog in this video since the home page will be used for that purpose. So let's come back to Seedprod and under the theme builder, let's go ahead and start creating our front page. We can see that our header is currently in a draft. Let's go ahead and publish this and we can refresh the front page. We can now see this. Let's go ahead and create our front page. Let's go ahead and click on add new theme template. We'll just call this, for example, front and under type, we're going to select an archive and we're selecting this because this has better features to use for displaying blog posts. We'll click here and we'll delete this one here and we'll include this just on the front page. Now let's go ahead and save this. And now we can start building our page to show the posts here. I just want something simple. So let's just click here for one row on the left hand side. Let's go ahead and click on the post feature here. This is the blocks that will enable us to show all of our posts on the page. I'm going to select the row here, the blue part and the width. I actually want this a little bit smaller. So somewhere around say about 790. That looks pretty even with the bars there. We could even maybe just go up a bit to 800. Great. This is actually really close to how I want it to look, but let's click on the block settings to customize it. And for the query type, I'll just use the default for now. And here we just want one column. So that's one per row and we'll show 10 per page. We can have the pagination when we reach 10 and that'll show it at the bottom. The title tag, I'm going to change this either to an H1 or maybe an H2. Here I can select the metadata that we want to show. I don't want to show the date modified. I'll show the author, the date, not the time, and not the comment count. For the separator, I'm just going to put a pipe delimiter here. You can see that that updated here. I'm going to show the excerpt, but I actually want to show more text. So I'm going to do maybe about 100. And the show read more, I do want that as well. So all of that is fine. Next, let's come under advanced 
under posts, let's check the settings here. All of that's fine. I think we'll just put some spacing here, maybe about 50 pixels. Under the text, we have the title topography. And I'm actually pretty happy with how it looks currently. For the meta topography, actually, we do want to center that. So let's open the title topography and just center. Under the meta topography, let's click here. And the font size, I actually want it fairly small, somewhere around maybe 13. And I'm going to add some line height here. So there's some spacing between the title and the text here. Let's go ahead and center this. And we'll put that around four. There we go. That looks good. The read more text is fine. Let's go ahead and center that as well, though. And that looks pretty good to me. Let's check out the spacing. Make sure that there's no odd spacing that we want to get rid of. I'll just set everything to zero for now. And there we go. I think that looks pretty good. Now, if you want, you could center the body text as well. Right now, I have it aligned to the left. I'm going to leave it like that. And it does look a little bit wider here than what I like. So let's go ahead and we'll put this back down to the 790 that we had it at. Maybe even a little bit further. All right, let's go ahead and save our page. We can exit out of here. If we refresh our front page, you can see that our page has been updated. And the reason this shows here is because under our front page conditions, we told this to include on the front page. So now we can see our header. We have our blog posts that will display one after another in a very minimal design. And we can actually click on this. And now we want to create the blog post template. To get back to our homepage, we have the homepage link that will take us back here. Okay, great. So let's create a single post template. So add new theme template. And we'll just call this maybe post just to keep the name simple. And then under type, we'll click on single post. And I want to include this on every single post. So we can click save. Again, I just want to keep this really simple. So let's create a new row here. Let's select the row options here. And I believe we had that around 760 in width, right? And we'll come back to our blocks. So these template tags will actually change based on the page that it's showing. So because this template will be used on multiple blog posts, we can use the post title here. So we can click on this and this will actually update depending on what blog post it's showing. So right now this is just some sample text that it's showing. So under block settings, you can change the level here. So if you want a little smaller, you can use the H levels to do that or a custom font size. I'd either go with an H1 or an H2. For this example, I'll just keep it an H2 because it fits in there nicely. But of course, that would be different for different posts. Next, let's go ahead and show some of the post info. So right here, we have the post info template tag. We'll drag that underneath and I'll just customize this to show the author name and then the date. So I don't want the time and I don't want the comments and I don't want to show icons. So we'll get rid of those and the divider will put the pipe delimiter here. You can put the space between up if you like. So we'll put that around let's say 30 and I'm going to center this. I also want the font size just down a little bit. I forget what I used before. I think it was 12 or maybe even 13. So we'll go with 13 here. If you like, you could change the line height as well. I think we used four on the front page. That adds a little bit of spacing here. Next, let's come back. We want to show our post content underneath here. So we have the post content block. We can drop right in here. And that's all of the written content inside of our blog post. Now this is optional, but I added a featured image to every single post as well. So we have a featured image template tag here. So I can actually just drop this in. And because of the size, I cropped it this size. It fits in here nicely. And you can change the order of this. Maybe you want it above the post information. Maybe you want it above the actual title itself. I actually kind of liked it right in between here. That looks good to me. Now we can scroll down to the bottom and let's use a post navigation here. We'll post this down and this will let readers go from one article to another. So here we can click and go under advanced spacing. And I just want to add some top spacing here, maybe about 50 pixels, just so it's down a little bit from this. And we could also add a divider underneath here as well, if we wish. So let's go ahead and grab another divider. We'll put that at the end. Let's just customize this quickly. We'll say 100 width, the light gray. You get the exact color from the header if you wish. And this was a dotted line, and that looks pretty good. We'll just make that a little bit smaller. You could actually go really small if you like. I think we did about 30 on the header. Under advanced, we can do spacing and a little bit of top. We could do maybe 50. So it's a nice little break here. All right, the next thing we could do at the bottom, we could add a headline here at the bottom here underneath the navigation. And let's select our headline here and we can change the text to something about maybe more articles or more reading, whatever you wish to use. I'll change this to an H2, maybe even an H3. And we'll go under advanced spacing. And on the top, we'll do 50 again. And I just want to show articles underneath here. So we can go back to our blocks and use the posts again. And by default, I actually like the look of that. So I think I'll just leave it how it is here. Now, an optional thing that you could use as well is an about the author section. So we have an author box here. I could add this at the bottom. And this is just taking the information from the edit profile section that I showed you earlier. There's our profile picture, the name, and then a little bit of a biography here. You can click here and display what you want to show. So the profile picture, display name, HTML tag that you want to use. So you can make that a little bigger if you wish. I'll use an H3. You can hide and close different things here. Go under advanced spacing. And again, at the top, we'll just put about 50. 
Let's go ahead and duplicate this divider and I'll put another one right up here. Now there's many other features that you can add such as comments and social buttons, but I'm going to keep this as minimal as I can. So then you can now take this and create what you wish from it. Let's go ahead and save this and close. And you can see how easy this was with just a few different templates in our website. So let's go ahead and refresh our front page. We have our header here with a menu. We have our posts listed on the front page. We can go ahead and click on one. And again, we see our header We have the title. We have a featured image with the post information, our actual content, an author box, navigation to each article and a list of more articles here. Now, if you wanted to add a custom footer as well, that's the same way as creating a header. We just go ahead and create a new one, put in footer, the type footer. This will include it on all the page in the conditions. And then you can go ahead and design it however you wish. Now that you know how to create a beautiful minimalist blog for writers, maybe you'd be interested in this video that will show you how to work faster with beautiful seed prod templates. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.